Well, it's Tuesday and we're still doing electrics for model railroads. And uh, last week, well, actually it was two weeks ago, I mentioned that when I look at my track plans and diagrams and stuff, I never think of it as a left rail and a, a right rail. Of course, if it's a center rail, it's a totally different situation. But on two rails, I don't think of it as the left rail and the, the right rail. I always like to think of it as the inside rail and the outside rail. And the reason for that is it can get really confusing which rail is which, and we certainly don't want to hook our power up if we're doing feeders where we've reversed that and shorted the whole railroad out. I use uh, red and black wires exclusively for my track voltages, and I designate uh, black as inside and red as outside. And by following that technique and that, that convention, I don't have to worry about accidentally cross-wiring something. So what exactly do I mean about an inside rail and an outside rail? Well, the simplest track plan is the around the Christmas tree, four by eight sheet of plywood oval, where it's just simply a circle. And all track plans on some level or another, even though they're maybe straightened all out, you can sort of think of them as a circle. And a lot of railroads actually go around in a circle. Mine doesn't. It's just a point to point that ends at either end. But even on mine, as it's going around, one rail is predominantly to the inside of turns because it goes this way and then this way and then this way and then this way. So I say, okay, this is the inside rail, this is the outside rail. With a more complicated track plan, that's a lot harder to figure out. But looking at your track plan, you can still come up with some kind of a system to say, this rail is the inside of a circle, this one is the outside of a circle. because trying to go left or right, you're gonna be saying, but facing which direction? It's like on a ship when you're saying port versus starboard because I don't know what direction you're facing when you're talking about that. So um, same thing here, instead of port and starboard, we're saying inside and outside. And my convention is always uh, red is outside, black is inside. And then I can hook that up to my power supply, and I, I, I actually run a, a bus underneath the entire railroad, uh, a heavy wire bus. That everywhere the track goes, that bus is going. It isn't under every piece of track. It just has to be near that track. And then there are little feeder wires coming down to that bus from every single rail. I don't count on the rail joints to ever carry the current across there because rail joints have a nasty habit of failing and they get a little dirt in there or something. So every single rail has a wire soldered to it, hopefully discreetly, in red and black. And then those go down to that heavy uh, bus uh, feeder, which is a 12 gauge wire. And we'll get into wire gauges in a, in a video quite soon here. Um, following that same convention that I solder a black feeder and a red feeder down to the black bus and the red bus and then that way I can ensure that I'm having a constant voltage as, as close as possible to a constant voltage coming from my power supply all the way out to the farthest end of the track, which in this case, the farthest end out there is about, um, oh, probably 60, maybe even 70 feet of track away from the power supply. So if I were counting on the rail to carry the current all that 70 feet through all those different rail joiners, Never mind also that if one of those rail joiners fails, then everything from that point down fails right along with it. So just just a nice way to, uh, to keep that convention using a bus, feeder wires, red, black, inside, outside, and then always call out your polarities as inside rail, outside rail, because there are places in your track plan where that reverses. 
and that's going to be an upcoming video how you deal with that but if you brought your track up and around this way and then back your outside rail just became your inside rail and therefore your railroad is going to short out but in figuring out these reversing loops it's also really nice to figure out the reversing loop by saying inside rail outside rail and saying okay the inside rail at this point is going to need to become the outside rail the outside rail is going to need to become the inside rail in order to prevent a short so i don't think in terms of plus or minus right or left it's always inside outside red and black hope that makes sense and maybe you'd want to adopt the the same thing on your railroad it sure has worked well for me and steve and don and al and we've always used this on all of our railroads and boy does that eliminate a lot of uh, electrical failures bus wires red black inside outside Anyway, hopefully you're enjoying this series on electrics. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, you might want to become a subscriber. And the easy way to become a subscriber is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Are we ready for that? It's zoink! Right there, <laughs> the blue button. But we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. I hope you didn't find it boring. And I'll see you here on Sunday. Some of that foolishness. See you then. Bye bye.